There's always room to improve in League. Whether you're new to the game or you've been playing for over a decade, no one is perfect. With a game as complicated as League, there's a lot to improve on. Maybe you lack basic fundamentals. With a shaky foundation, you can never truly build yourself into a great League player. And trust me, this applies even to people that are already in the higher ranks. Platinum, Diamond, hey, even some Master Plus players have room to grow here. Or maybe you actually have the basics down, but don't know where to go from there. A lot of people just grind solo queue all season long with no real direction. They can play hundreds of games and end up right where they started. How can you get better if you don't know what you're even trying to improve on? Hopefully, in this video, you'll be able to find some answers. We'll be going over some of the key areas you need to improve on. I'm Crumbs, and today we'll be going over our mid lane guide for Season 13. But before we get to the main course for today, I just want to take a minute to remind you that while meta videos and other content like this are a great way to pick up some quick tips, if you're super serious about improving, you should head over to ProGuides.com. Our coaching staff is made up of top level players and they're available 24 7 so it's always a good time to stop by. And for just $7.99 a month, you can take your ProGuides experience to the next level. Our premium sub gives you access to all of our courses and bootcamp content and we'll even throw in a 10% coaching discount. If you're ready to take your gameplay to the next level, trust me, it's worth every penny. Now, let's get on to this guide. The first key skill we'll be talking about is wave management. Wave management is something that everyone in every lane has to learn. You can have really good mechanics for your elo, but if you aren't dealing with the minions the right way, you can't even use them to your advantage. Learning to manage the wave isn't all that hard. In fact, it's such a basic fundamental that most people probably actually know how to do it. But because it's so basic, you may end up going on autopilot and not changing up your wave management as you need to on a game-to-game -game basis. When you do this, you end up not abusing winning matchups as hard as you should be, or making hard ones even harder, sometimes even unplayable. So, this point isn't about teaching you how to physically set up minion waves, it's about being conscious about what you're trying to do with it in the first place. It is worth noting that compared to top and mid, wave management in mid lane feels a lot different. Some of the concepts are similar, but since the lane is so much shorter, it's a bit harder to zone enemies from experience. Also, since a lot of mid laners are mages with good ranged wave clear, even in winning matchups, it can be hard to maintain freezes. So, take a bit of a grain of salt with this advice, it may not always be applicable in all situations. Okay, with that said, let's look at some general tips for managing waves. Let's start out by assuming you're playing the strong side of a matchup. It can be tempting to constantly put out as much pressure as you can on your enemy. Depending on what champion you're playing, that can mean different things. As Zed, that may mean just going in to trade every time your W is up. As Zareth, it may mean perma-shoving the wave to poke your foe under their turret as they try to farm. In a total 1v1, this would be a winning strategy every time. But the issue is, League is not a 1v1 game. The jungler is always something you have to take into account as any laner. Mid lane is also a popular target for roaming support, so you have to worry about those as well. So, the first thing you should be doing when loading into a game is coming up with a game plan for how you'll play the waves. In line with what I was just talking about, that means looking at the junglers and knowing how they'll affect things. If the enemy jungler is a passive one, you can pretty much play as aggressively as you want. The aforementioned styles of constantly trading or shoving up and poking work fine, as long as you lean towards a ward. But if you're the one that has a farm heavy jungler like Shivana, and the enemy jungler is someone who ganks constantly like Rek'Sai, then you will not be getting away with that. In these cases, one possible game plan is to freeze on your side of the lane. Once you have a successful freeze, you want to punish your enemy any time they try to move up to CS. This plan works best when you're playing a ranged champion with good poke or hard hitting combos against an opponent that is either melee or ranged without much AoE wave clear, since those opponents will struggle to break a freeze. But what if you're in a matchup where you have more early game strength than your enemy, but you can't reliably set up a freeze? Let's say it's a matchup like Talon vs Orianna. Like we talked about earlier, the shorter mid lane makes it a lot harder to punish enemies even in the winning matchup in some cases. You have better all in strength than Ori, but with her superior range, you can't actually leverage it against her that often. If you try to go in, it's pretty easy for her to disengage. If you try to pull the wave to your side, you'll also find that it's hard to maintain a freeze against her, since she has ranged AoE spells to shove the wave back in. In situations like this, the best thing to do is just hard shove the wave and look to roam. 
Being in the mid lane means you have the most potential to affect the map of any of the laners. You can look for roams to either side lane or even look for invades on the enemy jungler. Most teams don't really put that much vision down in the early stages of the game. You'd be surprised how often you can catch out an enemy jungler and snag a kill and hopefully double buffs in the process. Now, let's look at wave management from the weaker side of a matchup. Depending on the lane, sometimes, the truth is, you really can't do a whole lot. That's sort of the point of being the weaker laner. However, there is one thing to avoid. Oftentimes, a player in a losing matchup will throw out spells from range in a desperate attempt to pick up CS, but in doing so with an AoE spell, you may unintentionally take away from a neutral state to it pushing towards your enemy. So, avoid carelessly doing that. In fact, I often try to get my enemy to do that for me, standing in the wave in an attempt to get your foes to trade on you and cleave down the minions in the process is an effective way to get the wave to come to your side of the lane. Obviously this isn't doable in every matchup and you don't want to take 70% of your health to do it, but when you can pull it off, it can make picking up farm a lot easier than if you were sitting right in the middle of the lane. This is particularly useful in mage versus assassin situations. Let's use a classic hard counter as an example. Twisted Fate is usually considered nearly unplayable against Fizz, but there is a way to make this matchup super free for TF. It's as simple as getting the wave to push towards you early on, usually by getting Fizz to trade against you at level 1 or level 2. Then go for a freeze right in front of your turret, even if that means tanking the wave for a few seconds while you wait for the next set of minions to arrive. Once you have the wave here, Fizz's advantage goes out the window. What makes Fizz so good against TF is his E. When TF throws out his gold card, Fizz can dodge it with his E, then land on TF and take a really good trade. But when you're under turret, he obviously can't do that. He also can't break the freeze. His E is also his only AoE ability. If he tries to use it on the wave, he's open to your gold card Q combo. Anytime he walks up to last it, you get to pelt him with autos. Okay, now that we covered wave management, let's go over some more general tips that can help you a better mid laner. The first thing is recognizing just how influential your role is on the map. Like I touched on earlier, as the name implies, you're right in the middle of everything, giving you really good roaming opportunities. But a lot of people waste that potential. They shove the wave and AFK on their side of the lane, idly waiting for the next one to arrive. For some reason, a lot of mid laners seem to have it stuck in their head that roams are reserved for assassins or champions like Aurelian Soul that are built for it, but that's just not the case. You should be looking for roams on any champion when you have the lane priority to do it. Take Xerath for example. You probably don't really think of an artillery mage as someone that would be great at this, right? But it's actually the best thing you can do to leverage his strong early laning. And with his ultimate's long range, you don't even have to make it all the way to bot to help out your laners. Just go halfway down river, throw out some ults, then get right back to your lane. You won't even miss a wave, and you'll be helping your bot lane out a ton. Also, not all roams have to be about actually ganking and picking up kills. Sometimes just leaving your lane can pressure the enemy laners into backing off and giving up CS while giving your allies more room to breathe. That's why a lot of the time, when I want to look to go back on a reset, I take a few extra seconds to walk down and recall in a pixel brush. You can also use roams to get some info. Invade the enemy jungler, see what camps are up, throw down a trinket or even a control ward. Getting information on the enemy jungler is such an important thing, but so many players neglect to do so. A ward at the enemy raptor bush or on wolves gives so much to work with than a lazy ward in one of your side brushes. Closely related to roaming, something that will make a huge difference in how much you can do as a mid laner is learning to work with your jungler. There's a reason people talk about mid jungle duos in pro play so much. Junglers have such a huge say on how lanes play out, but mid laners can affect the jungle just as much. If you have a really easy lane, but your enemy is a champion that you can't really punish too hard, make plays in tandem with your jungler. Those roams we talked about before are even more effective when there's two of you. Invade together or look for a four-man dive bot. Even in solo queue, coordinating plays like this is actually pretty easy when you communicate. The last point we'll be going over to becoming a better mid laner is balancing out your champion pool. Becoming a flexible player that can counterpick different lanes and play into different enemy compositions is really important. Imagine your entire champion pool is made up of melee AD champs like Zed, Talon, Yasuo, and Yone. If your team takes an AD top jungle and bot carry, and the enemy locks in champions like Malphite and Ramis, 
you're screwed right from champ select. It's basically a dodge or go into the game with a very high chance of losing if the enemy team doesn't surrender at 20. Broadening your pool helps prevent that a lot. There's no right set of champions for this, but make sure you have AD and AP options as well as champions that work well with different team compositions. Also, one really good idea that all mid laners should do is add a juggernaut like Garen, Set, or Mordekaiser to your pool. While traditionally top lane picks, these guys counter all assassins super hard. Since assassins are volatile, feast or famine type champions, when you pick a hard counter like this, you're virtually removing any risk of them snowballing against you. And that about wraps things up for our mid lane guy. Thank you so much for watching. I hope these videos put you on the path to becoming a better player. Remember, if you want some more in-depth tutorials, you can always hit up our coaches over at ProGuides.com. And one last thing before you go, feel free to check out our Discord. The link for that is in the description box below. We'd love to have you as a part of our community. I can't wait to see you guys back for the next video, but until then, good luck on the Rift, and may the LP God smile down upon you.